Welcome to Young and Finch, the podcast created by Korean millennials. In today's episode, we'll be diving into the topic of mental health and our experiences with it. Hey guys, Brian here. Just a quick disclaimer, we just want to say that we're by no means an expert on the subject of mental health. We know that it's a very serious and sensitive topic, so if we do sound ignorant and disrespectful, we do apologize in advance. We just want to touch on the topic that we believe is becoming more acknowledged in today's society and elaborate on our own experiences and perspective and create space for an open and honest discussion with you guys. So again, we do apologize in advance if we do offend anyone, and hopefully we can shed some more light on this complex topic. So without further ado, let's get to today's episode. All right. Mental health, boys. How's your mental health? Heavy topic. Heavy topic. Very heavy. I mean, uh, I think we all kind of brought this up as being a topic that we wanted to address for sure. And we even had some of our newer listeners reach out um, and suggest this as a topic that we should cover. Yeah, for sure. And I think the concept of mental health is becoming more acknowledged and more accepting around the world as well yeah you see a lot of nba players even advocate yeah. like kevin love demar Derozan. Yeah. so it is definitely you know coming to light and i think yeah. it is important because especially nowadays i actually saw you know that cnbc youtube video that they post every day just highlighting like the financial movements and just like, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. like general news Apparently, like, during COVID, suicide rates have been going up a lot as well. Yeah. So, I guess it's more imminent uh, now that we have these hard, you know, difficult times. So, I think it's, you know, a good time to talk about this issue and Mm. get, you know, our perspectives about it. So Yeah, for sure. Why don't we just dive in and go straight to our own experiences with it? Have you guys dealt with you know, dealing with mental his- mental issues uh, personally? I have some cases. Uh, I think like in elementary school. So like one grade one to grade eight. Nothing really traumatizing. Yeah. Um, but I have cases where, you know, you've either been like left out in a group of friends or like the teachers kind of treat you in a different sort of way when even when in elementary school, I'm really dealt with um teachers kind of singling me out and i even at a young age knew that i didn't do anything wrong particularly or let me rephrase it if i didn't do anything wrong in a level that dictated the type of um like treatment response yeah treatment that i got by the teachers so that kind of like messed with me a little bit before going into high school but I think once high school, I was okay. It's just a lot of, you know. So that experience that you had in elementary school, like kind of carried over into high school and you were like, oh, I hope this high school teacher like treats me better or you've kind of had that stigma that was built up? No, I didn't have that. <laughs> no, I just, it was difficult in elementary school. Yeah. Well, but high school was, you know, it was fine. Mm-hmm. Wait, what do you what 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 do you guys think what mental health means though? Because I feel like that I guess that could be categorized as mental health, but because it's like, for example, if if you grew up in an abusive family, like that might impact like how you interact with people and things like that in the future. Right. But um like for me, I, I think from my research I heard I see that there is a difference between mental health and mental illness well it's kind of like a it's a gradient right i think it's it's all a spectrum it's it's really hard to say what is considered mental health and what isn't yeah and some people i think isn't there a difference like there, there i think there is a definitive difference between mental health and mental illness but i think in terms of mental health what is considered to be like what is considered to affect your mental health and what isn't i think It depends on the person Um, and something that affects me might not affect you guys. Right. So I think it's, it's, it's definitely purely subjective, Mm -hmm. you know, is what I think. Yeah. Well, I think from, from my personal experiences, I think, but I think this happens to everybody where you do have like those 
low days when you're feeling down and and you feel unmotivated and yeah. you know you just don't want to do anything right um at least for me it's like when i graduated at university and just kind of got into the workforce like i just kind of felt lost i didn't know what my purpose in life was yeah and i was just kind of you know living the motion you know I, I guess i was a little bit down at that because it's like oh like this is what my life has kind of come to and um yeah i guess i guess but i, I feel like everyone has that moment it's like it's not really like a serious mental issue. It's just you're just kind of stuck in a rut. Yeah, I think, like I agree. I think it's really common, but I think that's like it's more than valid um, to be something that you're dealing with mentally, right? Because, um, uh, you know, I, I had the same thing. Uh, it was a lot of stress and it was a bit of panic. You know, I think when you're graduating from university, you lose your safety net and everything's kind of up in the air. So, you know, it's like, oh, shit, now I'm working. And what's next? You know, with school, there's always next year, next term. But with work, it's like, this is it until you die. Right. So it's it's definitely mm-hmm. scary, I think. But mm-hmm. I, I would say that that's that's definitely, a, a you know, a form of stress, a form of anxiety. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to Brian's point, I think every one goes through that struggle I mean, yeah I, for sure you know if you ask anybody they would probably say they have a low point at some point in their lives i think a lot of it comes from university as well because it is so tough it's a very difficult difficult topic you know yeah i feel like none of us has experienced like you know we never had like a rough childhood growing up like we never we weren't raised in like an abusive environment yeah um like you know we always had you know, loving parents, rubbing household and things like that. And I feel like those environmental things can have a tremendous impact in like developing your character and, and your outlook on life and things like that. But for the most part, like we can't really complain other than like those experiences that we talked about in terms of like feeling stuck and feeling confused and things like that. The thing with mental health is it's not so much like complaining. It's, it's hard to even bring it up because I think in cases where you have grown up with a a good family, uh, you know, a full house, great parents, good friends, good education, you have all that and you still deal with mental health issues. I think it's hard to bring it up. You know, it's hard to just talk about it plainly because because you've had a good life. It doesn't make sense for you to be dealing with mental health, but you still do. I think everyone does. right? And your how you grew up is I agree. It's a huge factor. But, you know, millionaires, people who made it, yeah. people who live the best and, you know, maybe from an outsider's in perspective, the happiest lives, I think they even they deal with, you know, depression, anxiety, stress, all these things. Right. It's kind of hard to say from an outsider's mm-hmm. in perspective, you know, whether or not someone is or isn't dealing with mental health. Yeah. You never know. Like 100 percent. Yeah. Anthony Bourdain, Robert Williams. Who? Yeah. Anthony, you don't know Anthony Bourdain. Oh, who's that? I probably do, but he's a world world class chef. chef, restaurateur, um, host of a really famous cooking show, like around the world and stuff like that. Did he like commit suicide? Yeah, or um, oh. yeah. I'm pretty sure it was suicide. But even but, like all those Korean yeah, celebrities, fact. like even those K-pop, like um, Sully and Kwara, Kwara from uh, Chongyun, yeah. yeah, all those. Yeah, it's like on the outside when we're looking at it, it's like, oh man, these guys have. You know their their career is set. You know they don't have to worry about finance. They don't have to worry about you know all those things that majority of the people chase for in their life. But at the same day, yeah, you know they still have problems when they're when they're into their room by themselves. Like like they're still human. Yeah, they're still human. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine growing up and and living and operating in Korea is a completely different level of stress. Yeah, because it's it's taboo, right? Yeah, like mental health, mental illness. It's uh, it's a topic that's not discussed a lot in public in Korea. Um, do you guys know why? Mm, no, I think that attributes to why Korea is number one in suicide. I think it's just they're just not educated on the, on the topic. Yeah, like the the older generation at least. Yeah, yeah. It's like if you, like, if my mom or my dad was like, you know, to to their parents, it's like, oh, I'm not. Like I'm not feeling that well. Like I'm I'm not really happy in in my life, and you know, and just all those like mental health issues that they're experiencing. Most of the time, they'll just be like, "Oh, like 
just get better yeah like, what do you mean you're not feeling good you know like just suck it up you know they just kind of neglect it like that but and also like I, I even asked my mom about this topic and really yeah she's like oh like in korea like if you go see like a therapist or like like, like those people like people think that you're crazy yeah yeah you know so it's like those those stigma and, and things like that so because of that i think people even though people do experience some sort of mental health they're they don't want to you know tell anybody and they just kind of keep it to themselves and that becomes even worse and worse and you know it just becomes a bigger problem yeah 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 in this day and age as well with all the social media platforms it's really easy to kind of compare yourself to other people yeah i, I mean i'm sure a lot of i'm sure everyone does it at some point in their lives mm-hmm. you know i think that there's like a lot of factors that attribute to mental health. I actually asked my parents about it too. I called them yesterday and I asked them uh, from a first generation Korean's perspective, you know, why does it seem like what is their perspective on Korea's approach with mental health? And why do what do they feel about mental health personally? Um, and they shared something interesting that Korea is and I think we know this as Koreans, even if we're Korean Canadians, we know that korea's society is really broken down into two really core values which is my mom said umzong and chemyon so umzong meaning like uh seeming okay on the surface but not really sharing and being vulnerable and transparent about how you're really feeling and what's really going on so it's kind of like uh not you know airing your stuff out in public and then chemyon meaning like saving face so always showing your good side and always showing that you're okay and those kinds of um, values in Korean society, in addition to what Brian said earlier about mental health being so looked down upon, it's it's taboo. If you ask for any guidance or assistance, immediately you're like you're crazy, and that stains your reputation as Koreans. You know, if if yeah. if your son was going to the the therapist or something, your family would be looked down upon from uh, from other people just because of that, right? Yeah, and I think. And it's these things that really negatively reinforce people to not be willing to open up about what they're feeling or feel like their feelings or their concerns are justified to the point where, yeah, like Andrew said, you know, Korea in 2014 was number one ranked worldwide in terms of suicide rates. You know, 29 people out of 100,000 were were victims of, of suicide. 60% of those were resulted from depression or other mood disorders. So it... It's a direct consequence of of the society's values in a way, right? Not to say that Korea is a bad country, you know. I think that there's a lot of good things, but yeah. I think there's definitely one of the things that is is evidently there's there's some issues there for sure. How do you think Korea should go about resolving this issue, or at least moving towards that direction? I think it's already getting better. I think, I think even with like the advancement of technology and, and social media and things like that, people are more aware of, of, of these things. And, and um, I think like celebrities or people in power just coming out and talking about things, these things can have a tremendous impact on, on people. But yeah, I think Korea and society as a, as a general is heading towards that direction. Um, they're becoming a lot less more conservative and developing more of like the, like the, like the western mindset and things like that yeah um and yeah and i think like people of our of our generation and younger are are more aware of, of these things and, and they're not like afraid to to speak up and like if it was like in my parents generation if we said something like oh have like i need to go see a therapist then you know you might become like an outsider or an out- outcast but if you do it nowadays i feel like people will be a lot more understanding and yeah a lot more willing to help so i think we are heading in the right direction Mm -hmm. and i think a huge part of that has to do with technology and and just being more educated and 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 just having more resources available too it's like we have all these different you know call centers and internet and things like that yeah um i think that can play a huge role in in helping you feel much better i agree i also think I, you know, Andrew touched upon social media earlier, but I think one of the mediums of social media that's actually being really useful, I think, is YouTube, you know, with the inception of like vlogging um, and people being vulnerable and open about their lives. Um, 
I think that has really shown people in Korea what people are going through, whether they're Korean vloggers or American vloggers or stuff like that. You know, I think generally people are very transparent on their vlogs. And so then if they're talking about mental health issues or shit that they're dealing with, that's that's like a way for people who are Korean that are watching that to, you know, become aware of these issues and to relate to them and to uh, understand that, you know, what they're feeling is justified and, and that, you know, they're not alone. I think that YouTube has been a huge, a huge uh, game changer in that sense. Mm -hmm. For sure. Andrew, what about you? Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think it is going in the right direction, you know, with all the call centers and, you know, videos, vlogs that you guys talked about. Um, I think that there still, I feel like could be more support from the government. I don't think, yeah, especially in, you know, developed countries, I don't think um, mental health is a part of something. I don't think it's like the main folk, like one of the main focal points that countries um, address, right? So I think there could be more support there. I agree. Um, you know, maybe rolling out programs for counselings or, you know, social uh, gatherings um, funded by the government could be yeah. um, av available. But again, um you know, I I don't know how the whole budget, you know, the government has. Can't really speak on that, but just from a high, from like a person that's looking down, you know, there could be more support. Um, I don't think it's enough for volunteers. Yeah, that's just my point on it. My point of view. I do think in Canada we are really fortunate that, you know, relatively Canada I think has a pretty good system. Uh, especially with like the public education system, you know, there are guidance counselors uh, and people that you can talk to. I in, I know my high school, you know, uh, we could get referred to therapists and in university, definitely so, right? Um, I think that with the surgeons more recently in like the past, you know, 10, 20 years, I think we've kind of made a huge shift towards uh, normalizing uh, the discussion of mental health um, and really pushing for creating a society that values the importance of taking care of that and making sure that your needs mental physical emotional whatever you know are addressed uh, as needed and i think that that's really great yeah in terms of canada let's get it scare canada i got a question for you guys would you guys feel comfortable talking about your mental health issues um, stresses anxieties depression uh, with your friends and family because it can be hard yeah no it i think it'd be easier to share it with friends yeah more so than family because i think to family you just want to show that positive side especially like now when you're like a young adult and they're kind of, you know, going into their elderly elderly years. You don't want to show anything like negative about yourself, right? Yeah. Um, but I think yeah. friends, since you guys kind of grew up through similar struggles, um, it'll be much easier to kind of connect and reciprocate. Yeah. So for me personally, I think sharing with friends, unless it's like something really deep inside, then I'm not really sure i can but i haven't really gone through that in yeah. my life yet um everything was i would say manageable mm -hmm. in terms of the struggles that i've been going through and i always go into the mindset where it's like everyone kind of goes through it the subjective part about mental health is that it's different for everyone right how people cope with it uh, how people respond how people go about it yeah so Maybe like someone that was going through my struggles, but dealt in a different way might um, have a, you know, a better or a worse time than me. Um, how about you, Brian? I actually think, I mean, it's hard because I, I do agree with your part about like, I don't want to make my parents like feel worried about me and things like that. But on the other hand, it's like if I'm opening up 
these personal things i want to share with people that i can trust yeah for sure and know and know that you know that person has my back like fully and and, and has my best you know interest at heart mm-hmm. so if, if i were to be put into that situation i don't know if i would tell my parents because i don't think they would be able to provide much advice just because they're a little bit old and i, I mean who knows maybe maybe they can share some of their wisdom and life experiences and things like that but yeah um, i think as long as you can trust that person and 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 have developed that relationship where you know if you say these kind of things like is this person going to judge you and yeah you know like is that person really going to give you good advice you know yeah i think you have to put that into consideration like are, are you like does this person actually care i guess that takes time to develop but and i think family and and have and good friends is a good source to to go to if you have that kind of problem but once again not everybody has that resource available in for sure and that's what that's what you know makes mental health and and the solution so hard because you don't know who to trust and and you don't know what advice to take from from who and and like why does this person have the credibility to tell me what to do and how to live my life and things like that yeah josh yeah i think um it's definitely hard. It's weird to think that it's hard to share something difficult that you're going through with people that, you know, are supposed to be the closest to you and the people that care about you and know you the best. Just to share a little bit um, about my own personal experience with mental health. I encountered something similar to what Brian went through uh, after university. Uh, around a year after, uh, I was looking for jobs kind of working gigs in between Um, and then one evening I uh, had a huge panic attack randomly and then I kind of broke down mentally Uh, and then I had to go to the hospital and then my parents had to pick me up Um, and it it hit me like a wall you know just it just happened out of nowhere and uh, ever since then I've been I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety uh, and a lot of stress and similar to what you guys said before, you know, like I didn't think it was anything. I, I was like, man, I just had a panic attack. I was dehydrated or, you know, I drank too much coffee that day. Uh, and it wasn't diagnosable when I went to the emergency room that night. It was, it was scary to bring up uh, with, my, with my family uh, and my friends. You don't really understand what's going on. Uh, you don't know what the issue is, but you know that something's wrong. And uh, fortunate for me, you know, my parents were super supportive and completely understanding. Uh, And my friends, I don't know if I told you guys at the time when I was going through it, but some of my other friends, you know, I got I got direct messages from my close friends telling me exactly what they were going through, how much they understood what I was dealing with. And uh, and like, you know, I, I felt a sense of like, okay. Like Andrew said, like everyone goes through this. So I, I didn't feel alone, but it was only because I was able to reach out to them uh, and share my issues that I was, I was able to receive that kind of support from my from my friends and family. Right. Yeah. Even to this day, you know, I still get heart palpitations every now and then uh, I still get anxiety. Um, I still get mental fog and fatigue. And the thing about mental health, um, with my experience, at least with anxiety, it's like it's not something that gets better. It doesn't go away. It's just something you live with and that's your new normal, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and what's worse is people don't see it. People don't, like it's not, like I said, it's not diagnosable. So to somebody else, you're just low on energy and you're just tired and you're just a little bit socially disconnected. But inside you have all these things going on that you feel the hardest part is making that your new normal and figuring out how you're going to adjust to that. Mm. Yeah. This is a question, I guess, to connect what Josh said. When you reached out to your friends, um, how did they respond to you? Like, what did they say? So I guess um, where I'm going with this is if someone came up to you with some, you know, mental health issues, what would be the best way to respond you know, I think most people wouldn't like a sense of false genuinity or like, you know, kind of like forced genuinity. For me, when I reached out to my friends, they were very concerned. Um, 
and it was in like a group chat setting so it was like a bunch of messages and i was like yeah i'm fine but i think what really helped was the one-on-ones that i got afterwards they told me what they went through on like a more personal level they're like hey man like i feel you like i had this you know this happened to me i experienced the same things you're experiencing and and that meant a lot but even if they didn't do that just the fact that they're able to say like hey if you need someone to talk to or if you need someone there like i'm here for you like having that support system knowing that they're there like i think that's that's a huge you know weight off my shoulders that's that's definitely the approach you should take if you know someone's opening up to you about their you know their internal battles right so we touched upon how mental health is a very subjective topic Mm -hmm. right I always wondered when someone comes to you with what they think is a, you know, problem to them, but to you, it's not so much. So like, let me give you an example. Yeah. Let's say someone came up to you and said, my pet mouse is dying and I'm very sad. Yeah. But it's like to you, it's just a mouse, right? It's a mouse. Yeah. It's just a mouse. Right. So you don't want to, like you said, give fake genuine, genuinity. Yeah. How would you respond with that in mind right i think this is a pretty like a theme that i deal with every day because i do work in healthcare yeah and i get patients for all different kinds of reasons and i can't be judgmental about you know why they're here and, and, and things like that mm-hmm. like for example i had like this patient one time that came in the dildo up their butt damn right and and you know when when someone tells you that like your initial reaction might be like whoa like you know this is kind of it's kind of personal yeah it's like it's not what you expected yeah and and it's kind of it's kind of funny too at the same time right i mean as it's what andrew said you know mental health is subjective and whatever you think is not that important might be important for that person and i don't know i think that's what makes mental health so hard because not everybody is on the same page in terms of like what is okay and what is what is wrong yeah but you know if a friend of mine came to me with a problem then the worst thing you can do is is just just dismiss um, their concern and things like that for sure and one of the things that my friend told me is actually she went to therapy and one of the, the ways that therapists help like with the solution is instead of giving advice they just let that person talk yeah and and just ask questions and just let them talk it out and just kind of arrive to an answer on their own and i think that's that's genius because i think for the most part people the people that have these kind of issues they just want someone to listen to and you know they just want themselves to be heard like i feel like for the longest time they're they've been so embarrassed and 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 afraid for all those reasons like they don't want to speak up and when they do get an opportunity to express what's in their mind and actually have someone that's listening and actually care then right then it's it's like a it's like a it's like the floodgate has been opened i think it's very important to be not judgmental and just kind of be able to hear them out and, and which is obviously hardest harder said than done but i think that's what's certainly missing you know in today's society you know we always think that we are right and that person is wrong and there's less understanding and 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 more judgmental nowadays and i feel like all those factors is what contributes to like an increase in mental health and things like that no i agree i just i would just add in definitely obviously this might sound stupid but going through it opens up a lot of like widens your horizons dramatically i think i'm guilty of what andrew said you know if a friend came to me and was having a you know like they're really stressed out and about a a dying pet mouse you know i think i would have been a lot more ignorant about it and a lot less aware and i would have dismissed it probably but I'm not trying to victimize myself I, I know that like what i experienced is a fraction of what a lot of other people go through on a daily basis right but even just experiencing a bit of that mm-hmm. anxiety and that stress and panic you know i think i've become a lot more understanding and open to like empathizing with people Mm -hmm. actually to touch on the the health subject you know i I was actually thinking about this Mm. like i I would like to know you know from someone who works in the the health sector you don't work necessarily Mm -hmm. directly with um like 
brain like neurology or like neurology is the brain right yeah mm -hmm. yeah like you don't you don't work directly with you know brain or like yep. mental health but what's that like like what 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 is mental health like in the health sector because i can imagine i can imagine it's you know there's so much stress yeah. and there's so many heart-wrenching and traumatic events and yeah. i would just like your take on that actually when i was working at like the pre my previous hospital um we used to have like a designated section just for for mental yeah it's like know. a ward right yeah like a mental ward so it was called masa but sometimes i had to like get those patients in right to get checked out and things like that but it's weird because you see a total like a like a like a whole spectrum of people like you'll see some people that are actually like you can f visibly tell that they have something going yeah. that have mental health like mental illness you know some of them are just yelling and, and, and screaming some of them are like super fidgety and yeah and things like that and on the other side there's also just on the surface like just regular joes like you and me you know that's capable of just having like a normal day-to-day -day conversation like oh like how's it going like why are you here oh I yeah. never forget you know and things like that but they're still categorized as people with mental illness uh, so like from that experience it was, it was so eye-opening because although you can't necessarily always visibly see people with mental illness like yeah. you never know what people are going through like i think that's like the biggest yeah. lesson that i took away and because of that like one other thing is like that no matter like who I, you know, encounter with, whether it be like doctors or whether it be nurses or janitors, I trick everybody the same. And, and that's just with respect because yeah. I don't know what they're going through. And, you know, I might be that one person that, you know, that, that, that they desperately wanted to have a conversation with and things like that. Yeah. And I don't know, that's just something that I noticed working in healthcare. But yeah, sometimes you do see some crazy stuff it's it's real <laughs> i can imagine even for the um you know for the patients in the wards as well but even like the the f healthcare workers frontline workers doctors nurses technicians you know i think um mm -hmm. yeah I, I mentioned this earlier to you in the chat but or while we're messaging during the week but yeah i could not work in healthcare man i could not honestly i don't think i could handle <laughs> the the work that that you as well as nurses and doctors do like it's something else man for real yeah kudos yeah i mean it's very stressful but at the same time it's also very rewarding too yeah to, to be part of that experience yeah yeah if you're going through something you know going through or struggling and you feel like you know, Josh touched upon this topic a little bit, but I guess for like the general crowd, if you're going through something and it's affecting your mental health, how would you go about it? What would you guys do um, if you could do t something differently? Yeah. I guess I could start. Um, I think even though every I say everyone goes through this, I think each person's experience is different. Yeah. So, like, for me, the one thing I can remember is, you know, after my first year, I didn't do really well in school. Um, and I had to change programs because my marks weren't mm -hmm. up to that standard for the program that I was in. Yeah. And I think it was winter, right? Just right after New Year's. And it was very gloomy. Cold. I didn't have... Yeah, 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 yeah. it was cold. I didn't have a internship lined up yeah i was getting kicked out of my program and i think for me i reached out to josh and, and <laughs> like my parents are actually at that time in korea so i had to house to myself with my dog mm -hmm. so it was like super lonely and just kind of i had to really take a step back and evaluate myself yeah you know see and seek help i think obviously that's the one thing that i did but I think a lot of people don't do that as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in the end, everything worked out. Kind of put, put, pulled my pants up and, <laughs> um, <laughs> and was able to, you know, pick myself up and, yeah. you know, journey on. Yeah. But 
I think, right? It's different for different people. Yeah. So, um, just wondering how you guys would deal something like this. Yeah, Brian. For me, I would say, if you are feeling sick, like mentally, like it's a, it's a. I feel like it's a totally different game. Yeah. For us, it's like, oh, we we just kind of feel lost in our life, and we just kind of feel stuck. Um, like our our career is not the way it is and and maybe things like that i think those things are not as serious like in terms of health wise as mental health like if you have like this depression or things like that that's just my personal thinking but and it's hard to engage this topic because i don't know 100 percent what it feels like to be like fully depressed to the point where i'm like losing weight and you know like i'm suicidal and things like that um but for me at least when i was like i said before when i was in that rut where i didn't feel like i was advancing forward in my life like even this year like i said it previously in in my pre- in our previous episodes like even in march like i felt lost and I felt confused and stuck but um i think having goals and 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 just kind of holding yourself accountable to those goals can have an enormous like momentum in, in, in propelling yourself forward. Um, like I remember in, in May or June, like I got, I gained so much weight from just quarantine and, and things like that. And I looked myself in the mirror and I'm just like, holy shit, dude, like, like, come on, man, you're a fucking, you're in your prime and you're looking like fucking Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think that, self-awareness and self-analysis and being honest and authentic to yourself um, is very important because after that i'm like okay i'm gonna seriously start eating healthy start working out little little by little every day and then i started off like that one week i started tracking all my calories my macros i started i was more consistent with my workout it became like that one week and then i pushed it to two weeks three weeks and then i just started seeing these gradual transformations And then that in return gave me some sort of self-confidence. And then that was like the beginning of the snowball. And then I eventually got another job and uh, working there. Like I established myself there. I was was very good. I was very, you know, respected and, you know, liked by my peers and my my bosses. And that also gave me a a sense of self-confidence. And then I got into finance. I started reading books and I started just kind of expanding myself and things like that. But anyways, it just goes on and on like that. But I think the most important part is being honest with yourself um, and acknowledging that what you're feeling right now is only temporary. And as long as you're willing to put in the, the commitment, the hard work, then, you know, there is no reason why you can't get out of that and, and, and push yourself into the right direction. True. Hmm. I'm actually going to I'm actually going to disagree with you. From my personal perspective, I think telling yourself that it's temporary, forcing yourself to push through it um, can work for some people, I think, for sure. But I think if you're dealing with mental health, yeah, like when you're, I think it's not, it's not that easy. No, I agree. No, it's, it's like you can't, right? I think putting that pressure on yourself to be okay and feel okay um Mm -hmm. it can it it can break you and then you realize that you're never gonna be back to okay and then you dig deeper Mm -hmm. i think my my advice is like understand what you're feeling is and what you're going through mentally and emotionally and internally like it's justified you're not weird you're not crazy like Mm-hmm. you're going through something and the first thing is i think being able to take a step back and take the time and the opportunity to to get yourself to be at a place where you're okay again and that means cutting off the things that you know is bad for you like i had to cut drinking smoking um and coffee for a couple months and even now i, I definitely cut down a lot but you know you have to do these things you have to maybe that means taking a break from school, taking a break from work. That means taking some judgment from your friends. That means 
you have to make sacrifices but at the end of the day those sacrifices are going to be what helps you get to a place where you can you know like like brian said set up your goals work on yourself and, and and to improve and to get back out of this but i think you need to be able to take the time to really hone in on yourself take some time for yourself and get yourself that that tlc you know that tender love and care that you need yeah, um a self-love yeah 100 percent. and again it's a it's a process yeah no it's certainly it's certainly a combination of both what do you mean like for your part you have to start with by loving yourself and stop being so hard on yourself and right and being okay with having these thoughts and these doubts and, and things like that but, but at the same time i feel like having goals and, and making and working yourself towards these goals can also put yourself in the right direction and, and moving yourself forward so it, it, i'd say it's, it's a bit of both like i agree but when you're when you're going through a manic period or you're breaking down bro yeah. like you're not thinking about goals fuck finances bro <laughs> it's life or death honestly and that's the part that i want to urge like it's scary and it's sensitive yeah i don't know it's like if someone came to me and opened up to me about that like that's scary for me too because i'm like you don't know how what they're going through you don't know like how volatile they're feeling right it's, yeah yeah i think I'm, like correct me if i'm wrong brian but i think what brian is trying to say is you still have a responsibility to pick yourself up in the end right um you mm -hmm. are yeah mm -hmm. yeah so I, I, like it's different levels of you know sensitivity for other people but you know they're gonna again they need to if it's very severe they need to take more time to kind of take a step back evaluate um seek help yeah for sure right but ultimately i think it's up to them to you know see where they want to go with their lives and what kind of outcome yeah. they want to you know have 100 percent. like i think my point is that's not always in your control not everyone has that ability to make those decisions to direct their lives right but is my point i i get no 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 i, I, th I think andrew's saying josh what you said about those self-care self-compassion and seeking help comes first and once you kind of have that situation sorted out then you can start working about goals and and, and no sense. like i i get that but what i'm saying is some people don't work like some people some people their life is working through those things some people they don't get to just live a normal life is my point right like i get what you're saying and that's definitely important i agree but what i'm my my point is that's not the reality for a lot of people but but our, the goal and purpose doesn't have to be like our goals maybe like our goal is to like be financially rich have a good relationship maybe for people with mental illnesses their goal is to i don't know maybe like walk every day for for an hour or meditate for an hour yeah you know something small something simple and if, and then as long as you have that sense of accomplishment i feel like it's like taking baby steps you know, to recover I, I get i get what you guys saying yeah 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 like those those little wins will create a yeah a momentum no I, I agree with that for sure and no i and at the same time we agree with you saying different people have you know different problems you know not we can't obviously be another other people's shoes and empathize 100 percent. yeah right um you know they ha might not have any control over what they're going through which is unfortunate even if you're at that situation you need to find a way to make it better right yeah that's that's the ultimate goal so um yeah yeah i think the two points that we talked about kind of intermingle it's just i guess we communicated it a little differently i, I definitely heard it differently but i think yeah yeah but i think the ultimate goal is to get better yeah. right that's what we everyone wants definitely so. all right cool cool so what do you guys think here's a question that i have what do you guys think a good mental health is we talked about bad mental health and things that contribute to having negative mental health but what's the opposite of that what is good mental health it's a good question um i think personally i again this is different and it's very subjective to others but for me i think being motivated you know waking up having goals that you want to set and achieve um you know having a good 
support cast of friends and family um yeah. right uh just feeling and, and feeling some you know for some days you might feel a little bit unmotivated feel a little unmotivated and you know it's okay to take those days rests um yeah. but ultimately um you are working towards something and you're motivated and um just happy at your situation i think once you stop really um comparing yourself to a lot of people is also another factor um once you kind of focus on yourself um i feel like and and again through through ryan's point if you win have those small wins and have that momentum Mm -hmm. um i think it kind of indicates a like a good mental health where you're trying to always look forward yeah and um all right really and kind of take the struggle portion as in a positive light kind of thinking where you know through struggles you're gonna find success yeah and how you cope with um you know bad situations you know having that strong mentality to kind of go through the obstacles is what i would say is a strong mental health yeah i would agree what about you yeah well i got some uh I did some research, and uh, this is what I got. A little cheat notes. All right. Drop the fact. Drop the beat. So good mental health includes a sense of purpose, Mm -hmm. strong relationships, Mm -hmm. feeling connected to others, having a good sense of self. Yeah. Coping with stress, you Mm -hmm. know, being able to manage the highs and lows of life, and also just enjoying life. So pretty much what I said. But a lot cleaner and a lot, a lot cleaner. better. <laughs> well, I didn't have a chance to uh, edit my speaking capabilities. So. What's the source on that? This was uh, mentalhealth.com. Sorry. Wikipedia? Sorry. All right. No, I like that. I like that. I, I agree. Down. They referenced I agree, me. I agree with the um, the sense of self. I think that's a, that's a huge one. Yeah. How you view yourself. Um, yeah. yeah. Not compared to others. Yeah, that's that's the huge thing too, right? Social media, like like you mentioned, it's like, it's a huge way to really, it's a big way to really lower yourself compared to what you're seeing, and then feeling like a lower sense of self value, and yeah. Not feeling like you're good enough, not feeling like you're accomplished enough, and I think it's those stressors that people like you, like people like us, yeah. um, people that are trying to you know establish a certain foundation in their lives, yeah. uh, like we definitely yeah. are our our targets for that yeah and i think to that point i think it's in human nature to only not only compare yourself to people who have more but um you don't really compare yourself to people that's doing worse than you right and i think that feeds into i think you do no i mean i personally don't have any cases where i would you know compare myself to let's say a high school student kid right oh okay you know what i'm saying like someone or like someone that's uh-huh. um I, like, I never thought about comparing myself to someone that lives in the slums in india or something like that right you always compare yourself to someone that's doing better than you mm-hmm. in a better position than you yeah or a career than you so i think that also feeds into you know mental health yeah and uh, I guess on the, on one of the points that you mentioned, Brian, like I think the ability to handle stress, I think stress is such an underplayed factor in terms of mental health. I think, you know, what's commonly glorified and romanticized now is this idea of grinding. You guys say this all the time, grinded all my life, made the sacrifice, you know, rest in peace, nifty hustle, but hustle paid the price. Exactly. Hustle paid the price, whatever. I don't know, man. All my life. Grinding <laughs> all my Sorry. I think oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think uh these ideas of grinding and constantly working and never taking a break and being put under this um, tremendous amount of stress has become glorified, but like I think that's that that's having negative repercussions in our society and people our age and our demographic. Yeah. You know, I think the idea of working hard and working twenty four seven is is like a great thing, but in reality, it's like you yeah. need to take a break. Dealing with too much stress no. is not yeah. healthy. You know what I mean? 
that message isn't um broadcasted it's not shared enough yeah what do you guys think i think you know when brian talked about how you deal with stress yeah yeah right and you talked about these you know youtube channels instagram channels talking about never ending grit yeah never ending grind i think you know people take it in different ways for like sure you said yeah you know people might say like think oh like to be successful you will have to work non-stop and take no breaks that's kind of a you know bummer but at the same time i think to people who have a different mindset so like i would personally take that as motivation yeah. saying you know you gotta work harder and you know gotta put in the blood yeah sweat and tears to really succeed and if you cope with failures yeah you know it's gonna come to you so i think um i kind of disagree to what you said josh that's fair right um i think it's you know different ways that you could view the message yeah but i think you are some like you are right where it's not um just grinding you need to take breaks but you know again maybe you do need to work like six days a week 18 hours a day to be successful right so yeah no i agree and i guess when it comes to success uh, and if you want to hear about us talking about success you can tune into our previous episode uh at the young and finch yeah plug but what you're saying i I agree like if yeah if you're gonna be successful if that's your goal that's your mission then of course you you gotta put in some you gotta put in some grit i think well coming back to the original topic we're talking about stress yeah um i think i think stress comes in all different shapes and form Mm -hmm. you know you might have stress like with your parents or in your family or you might have stress with some kind of addiction or it could be anything. No, that's true. Uh, but I think, um, I think, oh, th- yeah, exactly. The way how you cope with stress, like, do you um, use, you know, some kind of drugs to help, you know, make you feel better, or, or are you dealing that stress in a healthy manner? Yeah, I think that also has a huge influence based on your mental health. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a hard topic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. for sure. As we're closing out, I just wanted to touch on a case I came across on Instagram recently, uh, and it's local. Um, there was a woman who went missing in British Columbia, and she was the mother of a, a you know, of a family of three. And uh, her son uh, Algar posted on social media, created a GoFundMe, and reached out to the community, and they did a community search effort and uh in november 14th 2020 uh, she was found um she was dealing with mental health including depression and anxiety um, and her name was yu ting ji uh i just thought that this was something that i did want to bring up because it is such a relevant it's a re- such a recent case and super relevant to what we're talking about uh, if you guys want to find out more you guys can find uh, this Instagram at find.ting, as well as the GoFundMe link should be in the profile there as well. Wait, you said she disappeared? Yeah, she disappeared. And reappeared um, this year? And then No, and then they found her. Oh. Yeah. How did they know she had mental health? Her, I mean, her son mentioned that, she, oh, I guess she's been dealing with depression and anxiety. Uh, and then months leading mm. up to it, it got um, worse. So, Damn. you know... Uh, my condolences go out to the family um yeah. and yeah if you guys are dealing with or know anyone who's dealing with mental health um for canadians we have the canadian center for mental health and sport um, the crisis hotline number will be included in the description and uh you can also look up any of the resources for your province specifically yes, sir. and uh if you guys are going through something just know that you guys are not alone there's uh, definitely plenty of help out there so i encourage you guys to not feel bad about it don't feel ashamed and and seek help yeah and seek help yeah because that's important you know it, it, it's a common thing and and the worst thing you can do is just kind of let it manifest in your own head and, and things like that so definitely seek help for sure for sure for sure for sure yeah it was a very uh very very heavy topic but hopefully 
even if he helped out a little bit, that's a win for us. So that's a big dub. Hope you guys, you know, got away with something from this podcast. Yeah, and you guys know what to do. Yeah, so follow us on the Young and Finch at, for YouTube and IG, and follow us on Young and Finch on Twitter. We don't post that much, but we will. So if you're listening to us on Spotify, just click the subscribe button now. You know what I'm saying? Stay tuned for our next episode. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next time. Peace. Peace. Edit yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, sometimes, yeah. sometimes on a Friday after a hard long day, yeah. you just need to crack open an ice cold one with the boys, am I right? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Some chimek. <laughs> Oh, Chimek? I'm down. How about next week? I'm, I'm down. down. I'm down.